Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. A couple of weeks ago, I had posted a video where I showed how to make a neck with an angled headstock by using a scarf joint. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll post a link up here so you can go back and check it out. In this episode, I'm going to make an entirely different kind of neck. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a blank by laminating several boards together. And I'm going to show you the correct way to do it and give you some ideas of what to be aware of. And then I'm going to carve the neck itself, and this is that neck, with my CNC machine. So let's jump in and get started. To begin the process of laminating my neck blank, I selected a pair of maple boards from my stash of scrap wood. When I select wood for a neck, I'll go through board after board until I find ones which are as straight as possible with a moisture content at or below 10%. For laminated necks, I'll use flat sawn boards since the pieces will be laid out on their edges, which reorients the grain from horizontal to vertical. A neck with vertical grain is less likely to bow under string tension. The boards I chose for this neck were cut in half to yield four pieces for the lamination. Before they could be laminated, I had to flip around one of the halves from each board in order to orient the grain in such a way as to cancel out the potential for twisting or warping. When viewing the ends of my planned lamination arrangement, the grain shown on the two right side boards has to mirror the grain on the two left side boards. To laminate the four boards together, I'll use Type Bond 2 wood glue and clamp them with a bunch of C-clamps. Then I'll leave the clamps in place and let the glue dry for about 12 hours. After the glue is dried, I'll remove the clamps and begin marking cut lines for the blank's final dimensions. For this blank, I'll cut it to a length of 30 inches and a thickness of 1 and 7 eighths inches. The thickness of the individual boards I'll use total exactly 4 inches after laminating them together, and that's the dimension I'll need for the blank's width. Both the top and back surfaces are then plain flat and parallel. The design for the neck I'll be carving was created the same way I do all my necks. I started by drawing a full-scale plan in Adobe Illustrator. This drawing was imported into Rhinoceros 3D where I turned it into a 3D model. From there I exported the file as an STL which stands for Stereolithograph. The STL was then imported into MeshCam which is a software I use to assign tool paths and generate the G-code required by my CNC machine. To prepare for the carving operations, I'll start by marking the center line on my blank. Since a blank was made by laminating four pieces of wood, I'll use the center glue line for this. Next, I'll measure and mark a reference point at the exact center of the blank on the top surface. From this mark, I know exactly where to home my router for the start of each carve that will be carried out on the top side of the blank. Later on, when I flip the blank to carve the back, I'll transfer that reference point to the other side, and that's how I register my two-sided carving operations. The key to indexing the carving operations in both sides of the blank is to use a pointed bit chucked into the router. I can jog the router from one end of the blank to the other end along the y-axis in order to make sure the pointed bit stays directly over the blank center line. If it doesn't, I'll nudge the blank until it does. Then I'll tighten the clamps to hold the blank firmly in position. Next, I'll move the router to the center reference point I marked earlier. 
The router is raised up high enough to swap the pointed bit for the 1 8 diameter two flute spiral upcut bit that will be used for the first cutting operation. With the cutting bit chucked in, the router is lowered until the tip of the bit just kisses the surface of the blank. I could use this position as my home starting position. However, I'm in the habit of using the corners for this. And one thing I've learned over the years is that if a process works, doing it the same way over and over is how you avoid mistakes. To move the router to the corner I've chosen for my home position, I'll raise it 0.1 inch to clear the stock and jog it half the length and width of the blank or 15 inches back on the y-axis and two inches to the left on the x-axis. Then I'll drop it down 0.1 inches and bingo, the router is homed. The first cutting operation will route a slot for the truss rod. When the slot is complete, the router will return to the home position where I can swap the bit for a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. Again, the router is lowered until the tip of the bit just touches the surface and I'm ready for the next cutting operation, which will be the front of the headstock. This operation consists of two passes, a rough pass to hog out the majority of the wood and a finish pass to clean up the surface. Once the headstock face is complete, the carving operations on this side of the blank are finished and it can be removed in preparation for cutting the other side. Since I only need the full thickness of the blank where the headstock is located, I can cut away a portion of the wood above where the next back contour and heel will be carved in order to save time. After cutting away the excess wood, I'll redraw the center line and mark the blank's exact center. The blank's back surface is aligned and clamped down to the wasteboard the same way it was when I routed the top side and the same quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit will be used for cutting the remaining operations on this side. After positioning the router in the upper left corner home position like I did on the front of the blank, the back side of the headstock is routed. That operation is followed by carving the neck shaft's contour and heel. Once complete, the blank with the neck still attached with tabs can be removed from the CNC machine. The tabs are cut with a small saw and the neck is liberated from the surrounding blank. You may be wondering how I drilled the holes for the tuners using my CNC machine. I didn't. Because of the angled headstock, the process for using CNC to drill holes is rather involved and time consuming. Instead, I simply mark the location for the holes and drill them with my drill press and a 3 8 inch diameter brad point bit. Later on, I'll taper the holes with the reamer so they'll fit the tuners I like to use. Okay, well there you have it. That's the process I use for making a laminated blank and then carving the neck on my CNC machine. You've probably seen a lot of guys making laminated necks out there that feature a variety of different species of wood. And 
while this neck is just basically made from maple, the process is exactly the same. The key is to make sure that your grain is oriented properly. You want to have the grain on one side of the center line mirroring the grain on the other side of the center line. That's what helps prevent the neck from bowing and twisting. Uh, what's happening on one side is canceled out by what's happening on the other side. Also, you want to make sure that the grain is going to be running vertical or straight up and down. That's what yields a neck which is going to resist the effects of string tension and will therefore be less likely to bend or warp when it's under string tension. So uh, I hope you found this video to be entertaining and educational uh, or you know perhaps inspiring. Uh, if you have and you don't already subscribe, you know, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so that you can uh, watch all the other videos that I've posted on uh, making guitars. Uh, that's all I talk about. And if you click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll get notifications each time I post a new video, which is about once a week. So uh, until the next episode, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead, and we'll see you soon.